Hey guys, I will try and debunk the one else vid um, regarding uh, his defense when it comes to the Turbo Chemtech Ionian Monamium build. And the issue is he has um, great uh, knowledge when it comes to Hecarim's fundamentals. He understands exactly what he has to do. He understands his role. He understands the way he should play fights. And he understands Hecarim's weaknesses too. So he knows what to do with it. And he found an inefficient build in order to accomplish what he, has, he wants to accomplish. So because of that, I will try and explain why he's wrong and how he should approach his job that, that he wants to do in a better, more consistent, safer, more valuable in terms of gold and efficiency uh, item build. Let's just go. Hey YouTube, uh, I just want to make a quick little video today. Just talking about something that has okay, recently been affecting like, my stream. Listen and to your, to things, your video right? a few times now. So if any of you I'm guys sleepy. know him, there's someone out there named LS who's this 5 like, here, man. Korean, I guess, LCK caster who also He's was big noob. coach for like C9. And recently it's been talking about Hecarim since Hecarim <laughs> has been showing up more and more and more in like LEC, LCK, and uh, LCS, and even LPL games. And the and problem in my solo queue games as well. Is that the things that Ellis says about I hate the Karim in my wrong, solo queue games. And he's completely misinformed. And the issue with this is that everyday people come to my stream and they come to me and they tell me that I'm wrong when in reality he's the one gaslighting his audience. You're both wrong, Mr. Uh, Mr. Duanel. But I can totally empathize with what you're saying. I get it. And because of that, I don't think you're a bad guy. I don't think necessarily Ellis is a bad guy just because he says that. Maybe I'm wrong, but I want you as well to improve as a player because you are missing on the best Hecarim build, and I wanted to show it to you. Into thinking he's correct, and the issue with that is that not only is he misleading his audience because of his own ego, but on top of it, it makes me look bad, and it makes me look like I don't know what I'm talking about. So, without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so now we're going to talk about Hecram as a champion. Yeah. What is Hecram's job? He is what is known as a diver. Yeah. So with Hecram's high, like, base um, ability damage, as well as his, like, AoE fear alt and his Z that increases movement speed, the thing that Hecram actually excels at the most is getting onto the enemy backline. Now, the good thing about it is that this, what this does for Hecram is it makes him a back-to-front champion. So yeah. since Hecram's goal all the time is to get a fear off on the enemy carries and then afterwards look for plays, right? Nuking the enemy carries and whatnot, then he should never go for a build that doesn't accomplish this task. I agree. This is why if you look, the only time... And your build is not something that should accomplish the, this task. So you guys will see probably in solo queue games, Hecarim actually doing that and killing AD carries and supports so why does that happen why is this uh, why is this possible and this is the first part of the video that will probably be very hard to explain because you actually need to understand that gale force is not a real item ad carries and supports are trying to play a game where hecarim excels at which is to outrun him. You are not going to outrun someone who dashes from 30 miles away from you with your 100 pixel dash and just two extra MS. You are not going to do that. It's just not possible. You are going to be stat checked. He is going to get to you. You don't scale from movement speed. He does. The hacker, I mean. You are not going to outrun him. So the best thing you can do is punish the inefficient stat-wise item build that focuses on getting movement speed but sacrifices the tankiness. So what do I mean by that? You should not have ego and accept the fact that Hecarim will hit you. It is what it is. Hecarim will ult on you 
and even if you somehow manage to exhaust flash get out because you ha also have gale force you are not going to have a real passive uh, real passive on your mythic you are not going to have real damage to kill a tanky champion even he has a lot of damage like Hecarim so what you should do are two things you can either tank the burst entirely with shield bow and mercs or tabai depending on other champions in the enemy team or you should partially tank the burst what do i mean you should just focus on taking the ult maybe flashing out and then hitting him with a kraken slayer as hard as possible and trust me no hecarim will tank will, will tank your kraken slayer big dick damage while he has ionians tier and two long swords or whatever else he has with and with his 200 hp from from whatever from bami cinder you are just going to melt him but in order for that to happen your dog support needs to stop buying Shurelia and get Locket. But because both you are both the AD carry and support are low IQ and try to they throw they try to outswim a fish instead of putting the fish on land where the fish cannot move, they just end up dying both of them, and then he accomplishes his goals. And then he will have result uh, results that could back his um, his uh, build, but in reality is he just punished dogs with a monkey build because in reality this is what League of Legends nowadays is monkey versus dogs and they can't both lose. Someone has to win, and if you're a if you're someone who thinks you can outrun a Hecarim with your Gale Force and your Shurelia, you are not going to ha to accomplish that. You might as well just tank his burst entirely, draw on the keyboard, press S and out damage him anyway because Shield Bow is still a broken fucking item. Or, again, you can just tank partially, remain quite low HP, but then you will melt, melt instantly his HP bar after you survived his burst and you are like what? 20-40% HP, but you're so far back, nobody else will ever hit you uh, as well. Anyway, let's move forward. Time Cycrum has ever been viable at a very, very high level, were when he had high speed one shot builds. So, one example of this is in Season 8, someone named Be Nice to Each Other hit rank 1 playing Hecarim by going Predator with Yumi's <laughs> and Chain Force every game full assassin. By the way, you can also play this build nowadays. You shouldn't do it. Just. Just as a thought, if you want a really for fun build, if you want to play in normals, uh, whatever, man. I'm, I can't believe I'm, ever, I'm even doing this, but if you want to play a for fun build, I guess you can just, uh, I don't know what, we should go some face rush, some a Nimbus cloak, some celerity some water walking some secondary relentless hunter and then you go sudden impact you can you can go double adaptive if you want the one shot if you can go attack speed if you want to clear the jungle faster but if you just want to kill that ad carry and make his life miserable you use this and you get as items hear me out dusk blade Dusk Blade, Swiftness Boots, and Ghost Blade. That's it. Those are the three magical items. Again, Dusk Blade, Ghost Blade, and Swiftness Boots. You are going to die in one second, but at least that AD carry will forever hate you for the rest of his life. And guess what? It does what Donald build, uh, exactly Donald's build. The difference is you die faster, but you deal more damage. And guess what? You go into stealth. That's tankiness as well. They cannot hit you. If you they cannot hit you, they cannot deal damage. It's simple. <sighs> Whatever. I can't believe I'm I even me doing this. And this made him hit rank one. And then another time. <laughs> 
once again, when it was the introduction of the uh, Chem Tank Force of Nature Deadman's build. And what are these? Just a uh, small, uh, small, quick comment about this. The reason why this build was viable in competitive play is just that you put free tank items on worthless champions, on worthless roles, and you used to be a useless mid shield that could never kill kill the AD carry anyway. But at least you are annoying and you did your job, and then you move forward and hope for the better AD carry to win. When in reality, the better mid would win. But let's ignore that. Two builds have in common. They have very high movement speed. They allow him to get onto the enemy backline. And when he is on the enemy backline, yeah. Back but line, besides the movement speed, you also have them. additional stats so like ability, haste, HP, I just wanted to find a build that was similar armor to and in that magic sense. resist, but that not to die in this instantly. current season. And that's why I created the build I did, which was the Chem Tank Man Moon, which now has changed to the Chem Tank Death Stance Man Moon. Yeah, you had the Death Stance, which is a so really strong is item. It accomplishes Crazy. Hecarim's job as a diver perfectly. Why does it accomplish it perfectly? I'll explain. Because with the Chem Tank, you get extra movements. So he'll explain why it happens and why uh, the mechanics behind it. And I explained you why the result happens as. It does. It would never happen, the thing that he describes, if AD carries and supports were building like humans. Speed. And then when you alt in on the enemy and you get your chem tank soft on them, then this also is very heavily so, so, so they can't run away from you. Face this is not Hecarim so doing down even easier. And with man, uh, this because this of the build, of it's just Hecarim being Hecarim. Stance, you're also somewhat tanky. And when you get the kill on the carry, you can. This is more even Yumi. That then nonetheless, the he had, had well. no runes there. So essentially, what I did was I created this build that allows me to go. Nuke an enemy carry that could run P9. You're only nuking him because he has Gale run, Force. Kill the rest of their team and not have a problem with it. The main reason why I don't think Divine Sunder is good and I don't think Train Force is good on Hecarim and I never build these items is because it doesn't allow him to 1v9. If you were to ult on an enemy, let's Every say. Every time I hear this, I and then the have the same Gale reaction. Force, and she Gale Forces away and then you get exhausted. If she does that, by the way, uh, what he means by this is. <sighs> he doesn't have damage, but he cannot stick with the target. Even though she is a low source of damage, Trinity Force is a weak item as well in terms of tankiness. If she's, she's away, if she gets a say, uh, to a safe spot, he has he's comparing Turbo Chem Tank with Trinity Force. Let's compare these two. So if she's away, the only thing you have against uh, fed uh, Jinx that's sitting you from afar is 300 health. This stats doesn't exist, this doesn't exist, and ability haste will exist in the sense that it will give you E faster. But he is right, it's better to have these stats the 50, the 150 more health, 25 armor, and 25 re magic resist against the Gale Force than to have these worthless stats. That will not help you stick to the target. And you can say it has free boom and bonus movement speed. Yeah, whatever. Get a big fucking deal. Once you understand Strikebreaker as an item, you will never think about Chemtech and Trinity Force as being viable options again. And you went for like Trinity, let's say. Trinity and Death Stance. How could you ever keep up? With them. How? He's right. He's right. Yeah, exactly. Now you're CC and then you just Unless he's big you noob. Do? He doesn't That's understand the dynamic so of the game. Just go in. You get this fear off, and then they'll instantly exhaust you. But throughout that. By the way, this is really important. <sighs> if you do the same with Shem Tank build, you will still deal zero damage. So you're wrong, Mister Duane. It. Your damage relies on AD carry exhausting you, but if you go Strike Breaker with Conqueror and you apply this fucking slow, this godforsaken broken slow that lasts 3 seconds, even if they flash out, flash is not like 50 miles away, man. It's really close to you, if, especially if you have Ghost. You can reposition with with uh, with um, the Strike Breaker bonus movement speed. Keep up your conqueror and then keep hitting them since you have AD, since you have health, since you have attack speed, since you are sustaining in the meantime with conqueror, with auto attacking resetting and with 
uh, with surprisingly the strike breaker it, uh, itself affect itself. So let's just listen to Mr. Uh, Donnell talk more. Time they're feared for like two seconds. You're even though you're exhausted, you can still like kite around with face social mobility, and then yeah. you can look for re-engage angles. But so which you can do you with, uh, the same. Insanely good hack By the way, he's saying this because he is low damage. He's looking for re-engage angles because the only way he can deal damage is if he has E up. And guess what? You are not going to have E up in fights uh, that often. Guess what spell you are going to have? You are going to have Q. So why not make a build around hitting your Q constantly instead of having your E constantly, which is really not uh, that efficient, I would say, if you are to ask me, Mr. Duanel is you can go in and no matter the situation you will always be able to 1v9 because the problem with going something like conquer and divine sunder is that if i ult on the enemy jinx and she flashes away she's never gonna die it's and then true I lose the game it's doesn't true. matter if i'm 10-0 doesn't true. matter if i'm 20 -0. True. It's true. all it's it true. takes is that true. and then people Don't say like, no oh, frozen heart second Don't okay. you. if i go divine sunder to frozen heart and then the enemy jinx goes let's say uh crack and slayer with mm -hmm. Dom, and then she flashes my initial engage by the way, if that happens, there is no human build that can save you unless the support is big noob and doesn't build the locket. When they are at that point, AD carry becomes the unstoppable most broken role in the game and it's not going to be your jump. You are not, even with the meme build with Hecarim Dustblade, you are not going to kill her. <laughs> you know what? It's quite possible that maybe you could be able to kill her with the meme build if they are bo if you are the best hackering player and somehow you manage to land the fee ah, I don't know. You you just lose when it gets to that point. That's what's going to happen. How do I 1v9? I don't. You don't, exactly. But then you can make the argument of, okay, well, you're going to be sitting there and you're going to be distracting them. So then your team can carry. But this is exactly what I'm trying to get at. This makes Hecarim a team-dependent champion. But again, your build only works because they are bad players. If they would be bad players, you'd still be a team-reliant champion no matter what. So you're just punishing bad players. It's the same as winning in bronze and then thinking you did well. Just because you won against bad players doesn't make you a good player. Or doesn't make your good or your or your uh, build good, or doesn't make necessarily what you did in game good. It just punished an obvious simple mistake. Going for these comps. And again, the mistake is you shouldn't try to outrun a Hecarim. It will not happen. If he's building only movement speed, his entire items are inefficient. So you should just stat check him. Sunder or Triforce builds makes him team dependent and makes him team reliant. Whereas yeah. if you go my build, you are the one who is in control of every single game because you Not are really. the one that is able to carry every single game. Okay, so but you can do that this, like, with many different subtitles. In general, it's just because he'll sit there and he'll say that oh, Hecarim should be not played in the way that Donal plays him because he needs to do this like setup that makes him a really good frontliner. But if a Hecarim really wants to one v nine, he's never gonna frontline because if you sit there and you're going to frontline, That's then just... you just die. You will just die. Because... But you will just die anyway. What what sort of argument is that, Mister Duanel? How can you not die? with your build that has literally no defensive items if you're in the front line getting hit by Kraken Slayer Lord Dominique's regards. You are going to die regardless with your build as well. So let's say I go there and I'm frontlining and then I decide, okay, enemy background <laughs> is in a good position to ult and then I go for an ult mm -hmm. and they flash away. There's nothing I can do, I'm just... Uh, again, I same argument. I agree. And the problem is sitting there and saying, oh, you should do it because like... It's good in the pro scene, so like if the pros are doing like this, yeah, build, that's then a it's shitty good argument. That, you know, like Hecarim's a good uh, frontliner in the pro scene, right? But the problem is, solo queue is completely different from the pro scene. You can never trust your true and false at the same time, but that's <laughs> that's too, too hard to explain at this hour. Solo queue, and that's why I always tell my community to do the build that I'm doing because this is what allows me to ultimately one v nine games, and. You might ask yourself, okay, but don't know. Why does this make you qualified? Because the thing is, at the end of the day, 
unlike LS and unlike Malice, I've played thousands upon... Thousands. That's not an argument, man. I've been playing this champion since it's released myself. You are better. You are a better player than me. Just and just because I uh, at Hecarim at least, just because I played this champion for whatever I don't even know more than eight years. I don't even know where the, when this champion is uh, has been released. You have to understand. I've been playing this game for twelve years. Is that that's not an argument? The real thing you should be proud of is that you understand its fundamentals. And because you understand your fu fundamentals, congrats, you reached a semi-efficient build. What I'm trying to show you is that it's not the best build to accomplish your goal. Of games. I have played legitimately the second most amount of Hecarim games on the planet. So when I talk about this champion, it's because I know exactly what I'm talking about from a solo queue perspective. And sitting there... And sitting there and knowing my champion inside out gives me the insight I have to create builds and create rune setups that allow me to 1v9 in solo queue environments. <laughs> That's why, um, when it was the initial item overhaul and everyone was still building Chainforce on Hecarim, I was one of the only people who started building Divine Sun on Hecarim because I knew it synergized better with him at the time. And everyone told me I was wrong. Everyone told me I was bad. I don't even remember what that happened. To be honest, in theory, prob probably... <laughs> 3D Force is still better, like who even cares, Tribreaker was still an item I think at that point. Like why wouldn't you go this fucking item man, like even reading about it without actually understanding it. Like think about it, you want AD on Hecarim, you want health on Hecarim, you want ability haste. <coughs> Attack speed is always good on junglers and it will be particularly good. <laughs> oh my god, I noticed now. I went... The face rush build, the wrong runes on each other. Oh my god, what a disastrous mistake. Bad, everyone told me I didn't know what I was talking about. And guess what? After a month, everybody switched over to Divine Sunder. And then after Hecarim... Yeah, copies got... monkeys other copies all the time. Who cares? That's not an argument. Uh, what you could say as uh, about this is that you are very influential in the scene. When it comes to this champion, you should reconsider telling uh, telling uh, your community to build uh, this uh, bad build. Try and build uh, better. So we are actually going to get the real drones for Conqueror, which are Con uh, for Conqueror Hecarim, which are you see them here. Triumph Tenacity Last Stand. I found Last Stand to be better. Why? Because most of the time, when you go to backline, there will be a lot of champions focusing you and you will probably drop lower to lower hp um, faster than you think instead uh, instead of getting their uh, champions to the hp itself to get more value from coop so last stand is almost always better on a champion that is 1v9ing as mr donald says and then you get conditioning really weak rune at least 500 gold value whatever this is by the way, conditioning is half in terms of value. I don't think I said this, but it's half of Turbo Chemtech as a resist. So if you are going to go Stride Breaker, congrats, you have half of a Turbo Chemtech just by getting this rune instead of getting useless movement speed in runes, which are inefficient. But you can get the movement speed from this. Dealing physical damage grants you 20 bonus movement speed. And guess what? 20 bonus movement speed. It's more than fucking Trinity Force. So yeah, he's right. Guess what? Trinity Force sucks on Hecarim. Sh shocker, it's just inefficient. I, play I played that item only once. I couldn't understand at the time why I was feeling so weak. I actually played it right after the rework. I tried tried it once and I never played it again because this, Duanel is right. This item is turbo fucking bad. Added, and he was literally 43% win rate. I was able to maintain a positive win rate on Hecarim even though nobody else could. <sighs> and even though everybody dropped the champion because I innovated. If I were to be rude as a an East player, you are playing on NA man. So who cares? An inspiration. But you're good at Hecarim. That's also not a, an argument. Man, arguments like this about win rates. Oh. Win rate is just a key of the puzzle. There's more to it than that.
rune uh, rune setup, which was conquered with inspiration and futures market cosmic insight. Okay, he stopped doing this. I'm not. Let's just talk about the current build. And this rune setup allowed Hecarim to be good again, and it allowed him to be decent. And then guess what? After I start doing it, people start. Switching. By the way, just a random factor. He doesn't understand the meta on supports shifted man. You are playing different champions on supports. You see less and less useless cows. You see less and less useless hookers. Less and less chosen of the sun. The reason that worked is because there was a tank meta. You are now playing in an enchanter meta with turbo high range jinx. And there used to be Kaisa and Samira and Tristana, low range champions. So no wonder you would get more value in a meta where you can be melee um, the range versus Hecarim. Yeah, of course, but it, that's not necessarily the build. It's, it was the champions play you faced. Over. So this is just no different than any other time. But the problem is that now, since I'm more prominent in the scene, bigger creators are using their larger platforms to kind of undermine me. I'm sorry, I'm just uh, East Noob. And undermine all my like expertise on this champion just to fuel their own ego to make them seem like they know everything about it. No, champion, no, seem like no, no, I don't know any everything about the champion, and also I don't, I'm not doing this for ego. I'm old, I ha hate playing su uh, jungle, I don't want to be slave to support and mid. It's a stressful role, it's a hard role, even for someone experienced. I want to chill and roll on the keyboard playing support, and I hate. Having dog junglers that lose the game against Fiora, Strindamers, Vegars, Vladimirs, Dravens, Katarinas, and other champions that build naturally correctly, and you have tier with your 200 HP item, whatever, 350 HP item, useless abomination item, and then you just fucking lose because you stand no chance mathematically to ever fight them. Even if you're the best player, you're not going to outplay a Vladimir Fed on autopilot. So I want you to tell your audience to be, stop being dogs and adapt to this build and to be 1v9 this way. When in reality, how can that even be possible? How can anyone pretend to know more than I do about this champion when I've played thousands? It would be really shameful if random old East Dog would know more about you than on this champion. Stop having ego like this. Even I have ego like this sometimes. But I should... I always try. Always try to consider. Even if someone is low IQ. Even if someone flays, flays me. I try and consider if they're right. It's always better to just listen to what someone has to say. Even if it's it seems dumb in your mind. Upon thousands of Skull Q games with Hecarim, and I and tried I with him with the champion. And what's even crazier is the reason why I never made it like rank one or anything like that is because I only ever knew Hecarim, I never knew the role. When I was playing jungle and I went unranked, this is the same as week, as a jungler. Right? If I played X it was with on your region, or I wasn't like I was a jungler. If I, I made a new account, every game, you didn't get to rank one dragons, because you're not good gank, enough, Ben, and you even if you are good enough. You have to play against others, b other good players with better champions and you need a lot of time, you need a lot of luck. Rank 1 is not necessarily... It's not necessarily... Uh, whatever, why the fuck am I even talking about this? I'm tired, I'm sorry. I just want to debunk the build faster. Never help my team. But simply by being a, an insanely good mechanical Hecarim player and doing a build that allowed me to showcase this mechanical expertise, I was able to still maintain 65% win rate on Hecarim, good job. even up to Challenger. And the only reason that account didn't go to rank 1 is because after that, I single-handedly made NA's ban rate of Hecarim quadruple. It was like 50% in NA, whereas in other regions it was 10 to 15. Why? Because people knew what I was capable of <coughs> on Hecarim, and they didn't want to see it. So oh, oh, okay, this is, you know, this is just a shit argument. I said I will only talk about the build, but that's not true, man. They, they ban Hecarim because you're a one-trick. Le learn to fucking play. If I'm in solo queue against a one-trick, I will ban him because he gets lost on the map. He doesn't know anything what to do, and I just win. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not 
banning it because I'm afraid of your champion. I'm banning it because it becomes easier for everyone in my team to win against you. Just perma banned it. <sighs> so now I'll get into why this build is actually good. Because you might be wondering, okay, Dono, so you've identified that you're the best. You've identified that people are yeah, only right. trying to demean you because of their egos. So Not true. how is your build actually better? Let's explain. Okay. Hecarim is a diver and he's yes. also good at AFK farming his camps. Think about okay. how Hecarim clears. Think about how he fights. Okay. The only reason people auto attack on Hecarim is because they build Sheen items. But realistically, the champion should never be auto attacking. He Why not? Also, let's just run to a camp really quick. I'm over fed. And let's just listen to what he has to say more about Sheen items. He should always be using his enhanced movement speed to look for repositioning. And he should be using the augmented damage he gets for more damage on his Qs. So that's why So I'm what does he mean by this? He he says you should be running like this with movement speed, use Q. If you have a stack, um use Q again. And you shouldn't use E like I used it here and just try and spam it again. So uh, I'm trying to show it. You have two Qs, you run with E again, you use it, I clear the raptors and whatever uh, right as it about it's about to expire you use it on the raptor again so he says he shouldn't be using auto attack because auto attacks because you should be uh, you sh so no he sa he says the only reason you are auto attacking it's because you have a shin item but what if you combine both of them you auto attack strike breaker auto attack what a fucking concept. Did you see that? What a fucking burst of damage. So, you, with this build, you're combining the Qs, you're combining the auto attacks, and you have more attack speed to enable Conqueror. And you'd say, wait, aren't you do making the same fucking mistake uh, LS does with Trinity Force? No. Because this item, unlike Cam Tank, has a real slow that which is spammable. Cam tank has a 90 second cooldown man. While this shit has a 15 second cooldown that gets to scale with ability haste. So what that means in a team fight you will get at least two slows on the backline. At least two on the backline and you might get even two more. You can get even Two more slows and two more if you get come come back <sighs> with the very inefficient slow that has a 90 second cooldown so this is why in terms of damage this item attacks this champion attacks differently auto attacking more using the slow more which is like a sheen again but the difference is unlike a normal shin. This is an AoE shin. Look, it's an AoE shin. It's a lower damage shin, but it's an AoE shin. So what did Mr. Doanel say? You are going in the backline and you are trying to hit the. Uh, you are trying to hit the squishy champions. So instead of hitting one champion with a shin, you are going to hit two or three champions with a shin, a slow. And with at the same time, when you do that, you are stacking your conqueror. This is perfect for Hecarim, especially because you get movement speed. And unlike Kiel Force, guess what? You scale from movement speed and you deal more damage. And you also have enhancer for your movement speed. And most of the times the AD carries don't. And even if they do, you have ghost. And, and uh, you use your ultimate to get to them. Which is basically a flash. But it's with higher range. Since flash is not going to get you from here to here. It's going to get you from here to here. And then, guess what? AD carries cannot kite you with gale force. And then you just fucking kill them. Again, this is a... Uh, a sheen in AoE that grants you movement speed, which grants you the, the everything that Trinity Force grants you. I will sit there and I'll Eon Hecarim. I always hold it out most of the time until it's literally about to expire. <coughs> so you can get multiple Qs off. And since I have like faster moves... I mean, you are going to get multiple Qs off if you have your Q stacked. So 
it's actually situational. It's like extra damage. And then I can also reposition and dodge abilities and um, dodge skill shots in a way where I can. Many champions have already a lot of damage. And again, if your goal is to hit AD carries, guess what? If you're going to run around AD carries and you don't go into them, they are going to kill you. Even if you run around, they are going to hit you. Even if they go FK, their champions, champion, uh, champion automatically hits you. Like when these fights, whereas if you're uh, pigeonholed into auto attacking, you cannot actually do this. You cannot actually go and like yes, um, you can dodge all these abilities and do all these things. Yes, right? you can because now this slow exists. Look at this say, slow. Okay, what's the perfect item for him? And the Look at that slow, how long it lasted. Ionian Boots will sit there and it will give him an early 20 CDR, right? It'll give So what he's actually getting here, he's getting movement speed. He's getting baited by movement speed. So, if you look at Tabai, it also gives you movement speed. Wow! But it also gives you armor and 12% armor and uh, 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 12% attack reduction, which again accomplishes his goal. But he's getting baited by ability haste, and he's going to think just because he has ability haste and he doesn't have damage in build, which you will get from Iron Spike Whip. You are going to spam Q more, but instead of spamming Q more, how about you spam Q less with more damage? What a concept. And if you do that, guess what? You don't run out of mana. And you don't have to buy a tier. So then you buy real items. Mr. Luan has no clue about this, right? Him Isn't he the best Hecarim player in the world? And all this I'm just a nice noob. Gold. So you get move speed, you get damage, and then you get CDR, which lowers your Q cooldown, which is your main way that you're clearing camps. Which means No, it's not really your main way of clearing camps. You can also do it with auto attacks. Again, and if you have uh, Iron Spike Whip, it also helps you clear faster with your auto attacks. Please, if you just use Qs to clear your auto your camps, then there's something wrong. You should be using both. Say so you're increasing your clear speed by an insane amount, right? So we can identify that Ionian boots are his best buy just by thinking about it. And then when you go the chem tank, when you go chem tank mythic, mm -hmm. what this allows you to do is since you already committed for an aggressive buy with the Ionian boots, then you get your chem tank to build your get your base resistances. So you're never So let's just say this. What if you are going to buy an inefficient uh you're going to buy an inefficient item which are Ionians? When it comes to physical damage champion, and then you combine it with another inefficient item, Chem Tank, which has, I think, around 86% value in its uh, itemization. So what happens then? You're just going to have two weak items that are trying to accomplish the same goal. Instead of having two strong items that actually accomplish the goal, Mr. Duanel wants to wants to get to. Actually, <sighs> squishy. Back in the day, people would go Ionian boots with with uh, Sunder into Serax. But if you look at it, you're getting no resistance. And the way they do cool. for this is by going conditioning. Uh -huh. but the problem with that setup is the fact that again, you don't even get that much resistance from conditioning. Sir, sir, how the fuck can you say that? When it's basically minimum half of your chem tank. It's minimum half. And I say minimum because this can scale with locket. This can scale with mountains. And of course you can say this can scale with mountains too and with locket. But it's still half. And if you, don't, if you think those resistances don't matter. Well, if half of what you think doesn't matter. Why would the other half matter? That's just wrong. So people would sit there and it would be like 30 minutes into the game. The reason you think this doesn't matter is because, again, you, do, you just stick with the... Uh, you just don't stick with the champion. But with this item, you do. Again. Really strong dispatch. That slow really hurts when you hit it. With hit someone. And 
By the way, there's something I've talked about slightly. This slow scales with uh, with ability haste. As you see it now, with just one item, you have 13 seconds over 90 seconds. Guess what item you're going to go second in this build? That's right, you're going to go frozen hard because as Mr. Duanel identified, you are going to kill the backline. And after you bought for 13 seconds, now from 13, it's 11. Wow, you might actually hit another sheen in AoE. You might actually hit another Chemtech slow. But then, let's just say there's a Victor with Phase Rush trying to outrun you again like the noob he is. Then you're going to get Force of Nature. Guess what? Force of Nature also gives you movement speed, also gives you MR. So it again synergizes with your items. You still have around this. And if you want your final build, if your the AD carry is still really strong dispatch, you have your Death Dance and you end up with this item being at around 10 seconds without pesky dragons. So congrats. This is your giga busted damage uh, dealing build on Hecarim, which accomplishes the same things, but in a different, more efficient matter that gives you an actual combat ability. 70 armor, 70 MR as Hecarim. And what does that mean? It means if you're going to alt in and the enemy has flashes or they have ways of getting away from you, you will just get insta-killed. There's nothing you can do, you will just die. Okay. And if they have serpents, this is well, not fair. So nowadays, what I do to counter this is like I only in boots. Wait, but you're not going to go serpent. Uh so again, let's just say you're uh, with this item and with this item. So it's only with this. You're going to have 90 armor and the 12% armor reduction, 20% uh, auto attack reduction, which by the way it can scale with some abilities in the game like Draven's Q. Do you know why Draven hates this item? It's because of precisely this passive. So that I have good early pressure. <sighs> okay, so your argument is that you buy level 2 boots to have good early pressure. Okay, you can do that with Tabai as well tank which makes it so that now you have good synergy with your build because you're making up for the fact that you want an aggressive boot option by going for a defensive mythic and then what does this chem tank passive also do it what if you go with an aggressive item that actually accomplishes your goal and after you get an aggressive item instead of going mana immune instead of wasting almost 3,000 gold on mana immune, you just build full tank and you have the same damage because instead of buying that worthless item you have Conquer, which gives you the AD along with Strybreaker to compensate for that so what ends up happening you, ha you become a better utility bot with the same damage but with more tankiness crazy it makes you a better diver so think about it. Think about Train Force and think about Divine Sunder. These are items that are Shin procs. If you're alting on an enemy AD carry, There's how long your is Shin it take like last? Maybe four seconds. So in that time, you're going to get at maximum two, maybe three if you're lucky Shin procs off. No, oh, guess what? You're going to get two Chemtex, just like you'd get a Shin proc, and uh, you with this item you'll just get one Chemtex. Interesting. If you're insanely lucky. So you're sitting there and your damage mythic is doing maybe an extra 400 damage. Maybe an extra 400 damage to the enemy carry during a team fight that lasts 4 seconds. If you get exhausted, you're screwed. If you get polymorphed, you're screwed. If you get CC'd, you're screwed. If they have flash, you're screwed. But what Chem Tank does is it makes it so that now you have better resistances. And also, so you... Again... He's saying just get Chemtech for resistances and when, when you get Chemtech, you sacrifice conditioning, which are half of Chemtech. Again, if you this, that's not a real, a real argument, man. That's not a real argument. And it would be if the movement speed from the runes was better in terms of value. And maybe I should have had the values, goal values in front of me to show you that it's less efficient to go those worthless runes 
over having last stand tenacity, which actually is unquantifiable because it doesn't matter what item build you have. If you die in a second, you have zero items. You don't exist. Tenacity is under, not underrated. It's it can you cannot play some games without it. And of course, you have Triumph, which uh, guess what allows you to play more to play the Conqueror build even more. Apply this slow to the enemy carry, which makes it hard for them to get away from you. You have base resistances, so you don't just get instantly nuked the second you get onto the enemy carry. And then also, you get this initial burst of damage on your first auto attack with the chem tank passive. So it's literally everything that Hecarim needs as a champion, rather than just getting an extra bit of damage. No. I mean, yes, but no. <laughs> it's just... He's right, those stats are what you need on Hecarim, but as I showed you, are in an inefficient manner. After you get a Q auto off. And then what else does building chem tank do? It allows you to go for offensive items afterwards. So that's why the, what I do is I just go uh, death stance after. <sighs> no, they don't. I mean, ah, he's considering death stance uh, an offensive item. <laughs> death stance is a tank item for bruisers, which is different. Okay, if you want to consider it an offensive item, sure. But still, you may ba basically buy this for um, for tankiness indirectly. And uh, funny, if you don't kill, uh, if you don't kill the, the 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 champion you're hitting, then it's not a real offensive nor defensive item. You just don't exist because you would rather get HP. In that case, you should go for dead man's. In if you don't kill uh, the carry with death dance, and even with your build, even if you are the mana uh, phase rush champion, if you don't kill the champion with uh, this item, you'd still Want a dead man's plate instead, or randoing, depending against what you're what you're playing, um, what you're playing. But of course, most of the time, dead man's plate is better in that situation where you don't accomplish your goal. That's answer mark, and then you go into that. <sighs> and with these items synergized, it... he's just adding two strong items after overhaul, and he's right. Both of these items are broken, but guess what? Both of these items require you to sustain Mr. Mr. Duanel. Require you to have conquer, require you to keep your slow, require you to have the ability to fight by having tankiness. You are not going to have tankiness without conditioning, without having your champions uh, being with tenacity. You are not going to sustain if you are going to get one-shotted. It literally just makes you 1v9 every single game. There's no team comp that you could play into that, well, I would say that 90% of the team comp... No, that's, that's not true. I keep with whatever build you're going to do, if you're going to play against Lulu, Kogma and the Kyle, good luck, sir, good luck, whatever. There's no possible way to play against that unless you really defeat them early game somehow. And then there's over. And of course, he's not playing against really strong champions. I'm telling you, man, people make fun of East players. But whenever you see a fucking Katarina with Exhaust Ignite and Electrocute killing your Corky TP first strike, who is a West player with 1k LP coming to a one Nigo and a 15-year-old uh, ADHD kid kills him. Let's see if you're going to have a hard, uh, an easy time winning that game. When Katarina has already killed your bot lane too, by the time you get level 3. Like, I understand where he's coming from, but nonetheless, he is limited to NA. NA is a really bad server, and again, I'm not saying East is, be is better, but I am saying East players from with Master LP boosting Challenger NA with 180 ping, and they have little to no issues unless they have really bad teammates so again it's crazy because Donnell understands aggression but he doesn't understand that other players can apply the same playstyle as he does with better builds or better champions on stronger roles well i would say that 90 percent of the team comps that you play into you'd be able to just easily carry but then in the ones that you can't play into where you can easily carry
the alternative of going divine sunder and uh, it's worse is just as bad no it's worse like, for example let's say the enemy team drafts vein right no it's matter... worse because you cannot one shot her and you just can't even i mean i don't know it's not even you if you can't have one shot her it's you cannot damage her it, it, you, you it's better off to try and ult and escape in that particular situation but whatever you do you just lose what you build versus Vayne, you're just going to get screwed. So you might as well just commit for a full damage. Frozen Heart is the only item against Vayne that can work. And I'm not saying you can tank her. I'm saying you can reduce her auto attacks in a fight by having Frozen Heart. And if you are to reduce her auto attacks with Frozen Heart, you need a sustained build. Hope that you can one-shot her. And that's the thing about Hecarim. And again, you will want Shatter if the Vayne builds bad. And it's funny that she, he mentioned Vayne. Because guess what? Vayne usually builds Shilbo. So why is Mr. Uh, Doanel having issues with Vayne as a champ? Yeah, with Vayne. Is it because of the build? Or is it as a champion? It's probably a bit harder to deal with a Jinx. With a good build than with a Vayne. To be honest. But still, that's that's something for him to consider. Why is a Jinx with Gale Force easier to kill than a Vayne with Shield Bow? Maybe Duanel can answer that question for himself if ever sees this long ass video that the I don't even know. Games with is by one the it's going to end target, up with it. And then moving on to the enemy front line after. So the reason I decided to make this video today, in case you're wondering, is because somebody said that LS said that tier items aren't good on Hecarim. They aren't good. But the thing is, it would only take you literally five games of playing the champion to realize that this champion has the most mana issues out of almost any jungler in the entire game. And you spam Q, you, can't go for you don't deal damage, able to go for because you're you spam W, mana. which is so inefficient, there and saying things it's like pointless. Are bad on Hacker, ma building, like, mana if you like, move with oh, T between good. camps, for, like, all consume soul or mana. Completely Ill. Completely Ill. So the best way to do this is again spam less Q, have more damage, spam less Qs, have more damage, more auto attacks, which are free by the way, you know that? This is how you conserve mana on Hecarim, you just build better. Because <sighs> you need to go for builds that allow you to nuke the enemy carry, and if you yeah, say, oh yeah, what I agree. you Frozen Heart instead of uh, Man Immune? Okay. How does Frozen Heart increase your damage on the enemy carry? It increases your damage by the fact that it allows you to stay with Conqueror. Which Conqueror gives you attack damage. It gives you uh, sustain. And even if you don't one-shot the champion, you still get to survive more in a fight. So, wh which is better? Uh, to deal 8 damage? To, uh, to deal 8 damage once? Or to deal... 4 damage 3 times because this is what's going to happen realistically if you die fast after you dealt your burst well the damage is what you did but if you survive more and apply less damage but more consistently you are going to end up dealing more damage overall and the only situation where his argument about going in for a one shot build would be better it's precisely because uh, against a comp that you will most likely end up losing anyway and even in that situation you know what might as well go that dust plate ghost plate uh, build right might as well uh, try a <laughs> meme uh, with a uh, one shot which will not happen anyway in those sort of situations you just lose how does frozen heart ever make you a better diver it doesn't you're diving into it does of them and you're reducing their attack speed yes and now you're hoping that your team can carry and your team can follow up but what in what about in positions where your team doesn't what about in, <sighs> in those particular cases you hope that you soak more pressure than their diver and you hope the enemies are noobs and have gale force and shurelia and your team has at least kraken slayer and if you survive more then your team gets to carry more. Even if they are very bad, you would be surprised how easy it is to play AD carry in team fights against bad players. Especially if you play on autopilot. Positions where you have to 1v9. 
and then even though you survive for an extra two seconds, you just get killed, and then you lose. It's the true. You will get killed if you are squishy, squishier than the enemy uh, team, and you will be squishier probably if the enemy team has Cyan as a frontliner or a Zac as a frontliner or Agn ah, I wouldn't. You are probably just as tanky as Agnar with this build. But nonetheless, it's still better than going a build in that case that still doesn't accomplish your goal against good builds than just whatever. Let, so let's just end I want to this video. video so. today is just because I feel like recently there's this like really, 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 really bad mentality going around of how my build is bad and how it is. Oh, all these I just show you why it's just worse. Because creators with bigger platforms. I don't have a big it. platform. When in reality, the only reason they're doing it is because they can't afford to be wrong. No, I just and want to I play support. It, right? If you're there and you make an entire career. Oh, by the way. Living, just, by the way, just listen to what this kid is saying. And you have any understanding of basic psychology. You will understand what's going on through his mind. Understand it, right? If you're there and you make an entire career and an entire living off of being this like analytics guy who analyzes the pro scene and analyzes builds and stuff like that. Just listen. If you say you're ever wrong about a build, how can you ever go back? Because once you say you're wrong, people will just always question you. So kind of insecure, Mr. Duanel. Why don't you just admit your chem take is bad? People will forget you. Uh, will forgive you, not forget you. You will be surprised how good your community is in general or content creators communities are if you are just genuine. You don't need to be afraid Mr. Duanel. If this build is better and you try it, just admit and move forward. N nothing's going to happen. You're a cool guy, kinda. You're funny to watch. But your build is not the best. This is what it is. And... You can just move forward afterwards. Life is not going to be over if you're wrong. And even if people question you, fuck them. What's important is, is for yourself to find the truth and what's good and what's not. Who cares what a random person that just wants to destroy you has to say about you, right? And this goes for me as well. This is how I get to, to this is how I got to this place. Just ignore dogs. Focus on what's true. So it's almost like you have to die hard commit for opinions that are wrong. And then the issue with that is that these opinions Projection projecting again opinions are wrong, then impact people like me who are genuinely trying to help my viewers get better at Hackroom. And Okay, I I understand. So if you really want to help view, uh, your viewers get better at Hackroom, play ten games of Strikebreaker with this build. J just try just try Strybreaker build with Conqueror. Try it 10 games. Try it on a Smurf. Try it in Challenger. Try it across all Lilos. Approach the game differently and you'll see it's better than what you're doing. I'm genuinely trying to sit here and help my uh, community and like everyone who wants to get better at Hackroom get better at him. Right? You have to understand that the main reason I do everything that I do is help people become better Hackroom players. It's as simple as that. That's the reason why I innovated the build I innovated and I told everyone about it. And that's the reason why I push out the Hecarim content that I do. It's to help people improve and help people get better at a champion that I love. Versus people that just want to improve their own image and improve their own ego. For whatever satisfaction that might bring them. But uh, at the end of the day, that's all it comes down to. <laughs> if you think the Chem Tank Manmune build is actually good, hit a like. If you don't, well, you can continue your LS sub. But that thing's... I'm not sub to LS, but that was a funny joke. And again, I think LS is, if I am to be honest about it, I f I'd rather have his build than LS's build. It's true. His build is better than LS, but his build also sucks. And as a conclusion, the only reason his build also works is because he's playing against bad players. And instead of both him and the bad players losing, someone has to win. Said I really didn't want to make this video, and I don't want to start any drama, but it's at the point now where it's genuinely affecting people's perception of me. The fact that people are willing to spew misinformation the way they are. And I, really I hope I just feel like I have nothing to bad this happens to you. Just to kind of counteract everything. Though, but I don't hate love you. you all. Um, and I'll see you all for the next video. Peace. Okay, bye. And. <sighs> 
just uh, I don't I, one more f final thing I haven't searched for this uh, and under as a preparation <sighs> this is my opinion of Duanel. I posted this on 6th of February I wish him the best and I really hope he considers this build and let's see what happens bye bye